Hi, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home, and we are loading trusses today with a crane, and it's very challenging. This is probably one of the scariest times for owner builders, or if you've never been through the process of construction, rolling trusses is something that uh, really scares people uh, because it's it's huge. There's a big crane involved, as you can see, and uh, setting it up and lining it up and where they sit. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to go through to help you prepare for trusses. One of the first things you want to be prepared for is any wall height changes. Uh, if there are any wall height changes in a build like you see here, that starts to increase the complexity of the trusses, how they sit, where the beams are, etc. I want to go over here and show you what we have. This here is a, a truss layout. And a truss layout is basically a single piece of paper that is basically in a one dimension that shows you where they lay, line out on top of the top plate of the building. What you really need in addition to that is your truss book. And the truss book actually shows the profile of the truss, where it sits, if it's a pocket truss or if it's a scissor truss or a common truss or just about any kind of truss. It shows you how it's built. Then it helps the framer realize, okay, I need a pony wall here, I need a beam here, it's gonna rest here, it's gonna sit on this plate, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't have this, a, a booklet that actually identifies the profile of the truss, the framer is gonna be very confused. They can't just go off the layout, they need the profile of each truss. Those two things you need even before framing starts. A lot of permit offices, county and city, are gonna ask for this in a PDF format. You'll upload that, uh, and same thing with the truss layout. So when the inspector comes, this is in my tube over there, they pull this out, in addition to the engineered plans, they pull those out and then they inspect based upon what you've got engineered, what you've got planned. Now what you'll find oftentimes is the engineered plans can be different from the truss plans. The truss plant can often design trusses to accommodate some other issues. I want to show you one of those over here. We have several trusses that shoot all the way through here and we had them designed that way, whereas the trusses over the main living area are not designed that way because the engineer had a beam right here to support for um, a transfer a shear, a tr any transfer shear, so basically holding the building together this way. And so rather than putting the beam here, we talked with the truss plant, can you engineer your beams to accommodate for that pole? And they did. So we eliminated a beam or actually a support beam, engineered support beam, right over this master bedroom. And that's where communication comes in play. If you talk with, I call the um, a truss plant, I go, hey, can you manufacture or uh, build your beams to accommodate that? Talked with him on the phone for a, while, a minute, and he says, Keith, uh, we can actually re redraft a letter indicating that the trusses we actually have built can accommodate for that tension that's gonna be required inside the building. So when the inspector comes, I'll have that letter, it'll be on site here, and then I can show the, the inspector, I don't need the beam here, the truss plant is taking over that responsibility, they're incorporating that with inside their trusses. So, trusses can be uh, a scary thing, just walk through it and talk with your truss plant, call them on the phone, make sure you have your layout, your truss layout, and make sure you have your truss booklet that gives the profile of all the trusses. If those are on site when the framer's here, boy, that's going to be uh, really, really easy and much more uh, um, a smoother process, especially when you have wall height changes like, it, like this. If you have this, like a rambler and it's one height for the entire top plate, the, the inside is the same height throughout the entire build, that's pretty easy to straight up solve. But if you've got multiple wall height changes, you really need to make sure your communication is on top of things. You really need to make sure you've got the layout and the truss booklet. So anyway, it's been fun rolling a trusses today. And uh, there's some additional B-roll that you can see on the rolling trusses. It's scary, but if you're organized, it doesn't have to be. This is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home.